everybody, I'm Erin and this is Waiting Moose. Today I'm going to be talking to you about um, my next choice from the Canada Reads Long List, and that is David Chirandi's brother. There we go, no glare. Woohoo! Is a book about Trinidadian immigrants. Yes, so the story uh, is told from the younger brother, Michael's point of view, and Michael. <laughs> He lives, Michael, well, his family lives in Scarborough, which I just read Scarborough. So this was kind of an interesting follow-up to that, looking at, I believe it was a different part of Scarborough and definitely a different family. So this one um, is examining a specific Trinidadian family. It doesn't really go outside of that family. And it talks about the neighborhood they live in a little bit, but mostly it's about Michael, his brother, and his mother. Now, you see, once again, like Scarborough, um, you, you see the poverty that a lot of these people live in. He talks about the racism. He talks about how Scarborough is stigmatized as a, an area of immigrants and it has various names um, that are derogatory based on um, the, the cultures that live there. So it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a great view of our society because it does highlight the racism, which is what it is meant to do. Now, in this book, from the blurb on the inside cover, you learn that there's a, uh, a shooting, and after that shooting, the police, there's a lot of suspicion, and the police crack down and are very much more, they enforce the laws, I guess, a little bit more strictly in these areas of Scarborough. So, and with certain skin colors. Um, you watch as uh, Michael's older brother Francis and his mother start to, their relationship starts to fall apart and you can see where she's working very very hard to give her sons um, a better life than she's had and some better opportunities and you watch as the sons see a different reality of Canada and they watch their mother working so very very hard to never never actually make it anywhere in her life and the older brother definitely gets um, jaded by this and the story it's it tells the story of Michael and his brother as I said and Francis really loves music um, he's got some other loves in his life but music is a big one he, he's he's really into the music scene uh, he's got a lot of really good friends in that but that also comes with some of the the gangster associations and um, some other issues that you can you, you can see coming and you're like watch out you know don't don't do that don't do that but and then Michael is in love with a girl in the neighborhood and you know that something's happened in this book and but you don't know what until right at the end you don't know where this book is going um, but you do know something has happened so there's a shooting early on in the book and then it's kind of a dual timeline where you're looking at the present, which is Michael and his mother and this girl who's come back to Scarborough, and the past with Michael and his brother and some other characters from the neighborhood, including this girl. Um, and you go back and forth between the timelines as the story goes along and it culminates with, you know, you find out what happened to his brother, why his brother's not really a part of the present story anymore, and it's kind of heartbreaking. So, how I felt about this book. Now, when I read Scarborough, I, I told you guys, I finished it and I cried, and I didn't know why I cried, because I didn't feel like I had that emotional connection to the characters in the book. I don't feel like I had an emotional connection to the characters in this book. I feel like the things that happened to them were awful. Um, you can see, you know, shades of what's happened in the United States with the, the way the police treat um, people in these neighborhoods. And at the same time, there are characters, the characters are flawed. <laughs> and you're seeing the story from Michael's viewpoint. So Michael is your narrator, and I don't know that Michael is the most reliable narrator because as the story goes on, you start to understand that maybe what he's seeing isn't 
completely what happened. So he obviously idolized his brother, and he, his, Francis had some anger management issues and some real, you know, issues with authority. And I mean, who wouldn't in these situations? But I just felt like that unreliable narrator, as we went along and I realized he was unreliable, I stopped, like, you, you don't understand what's go what is actually going on in the story. And I understand why the author did that, but I think it also separated you a little bit from the characters because, you know, you're, you're looking at them from this idolized viewpoint and you don't actually get to know the character for who they are and why Francis behaves the way he does. There's hints of it, but until the, the, you get closer to the end, it doesn't really, you don't really have a full understanding of what's going on in some of the relationships in this book. It's a powerful story. It talks about poverty again, and racism, and how the class system works in our country, which is Canada, because this is again set in Scarborough, Ontario. And I just, I think it was a very good book. I can understand why it maybe did not make the shortlist, but uh, I did enjoy reading it. It's a short read, it's under 200 pages, so it wasn't a huge amount of time um, that I had to spend reading it, but I didn't feel like it was a chore to read, if that makes any sense. Um, I enjoyed the descriptions of some of the music in this. I enjoyed the mixing of cultures through that music and how the, the um, artists in the, the artist characters mix the music and mix the cultures and to create something beautiful, which I thought was um, a little bit of an irony when you consider, uh, yeah, the situation, you know, the mixed cultures in the neighborhood in this book and how that's maybe not so beautiful, but what's coming out of it, there's some beauty that comes out of it. Um, yeah, so that was Brother by David Cheriandi, and I am going to be looking for more of his books. This is not his first book. He has published uh, Sukuyat was his debut novel, and it was shortlisted for the Governor General's Literary Award and a Gold Independent Publisher Award for Best Novel, and it was longlisted for the Scotiabank Giller Prize. So um, his first novel has some literary success, and then this one um, may as well. But I, I look forward to reading the uh, Sukuyant, I think is how you pronounce that word. So there you go. Have you read this book? What other books, I, I guess, would you recommend uh, that are like this or like Scarborough, where they talk about um, poverty or other, like, poverty, um, racism in our, in our society? So, yeah, I'd love to hear that from you guys. And I will be talking to you soon. Bye!